live, still going live. Yeah. Live. All right, ladies and gentlemen, some gadget guy here joined by a, a, a fantastic gaggle of gadget bloggers. I'm so excited. I may or may not be wearing pants, but we have official Whoa. announcements Whoa. from Google <laughs> regarding the future of smartwatches, and uh, we really want to jump into a discussion on what's going down with. Android Wear, the new wearable UI that they're coming out for watches, and then also Motorola actually beating Google to the punch in announcing their Moto 360, uh, the circular smartwatch coming out by Moto, maybe building a little momentum for Lenovo. I'm joined by Glasses and Glitter herself, Tori. I've got Thunder E from Board at Work, and I've got uh, the superior Andrew Cam from Mobile Burn. Hey, everybody. I'm really excited for you guys to join me. Um, so give me one big group. Hooray, hi. Hoodie high. Happy New Year, regular. Hello. What's <laughs> up? So I, I want to jump right in because uh, we, we've talked about smartwatches and wearables on the weekly roundtable ha uh, hangouts that we've done uh, often in the past. And I think uh, especially when it came to the Android experience, uh, we've, we've all been pretty critical about where smartwatches are right now and what we've been hoping to see smartwatches go in the future. So kind of going down our list of gadget bloggers here, let's start with Tori. Um, what did you think about the announcement, especially for Android Wear? Let's focus on that first, uh, showing off the new UI. Well, you know what? One of my huge issues with the gadget watches are that they're ugly. Like, well, not necessarily ugly, but they don't look like watches. Anything. I think at CES I saw. Um, I can't even think of who it who it was, but they came out with a um, Martian. That's who had the smartwatch that actually looked like a watch that people would actually wear. Right? <laughs> you are so Wait. stupid. <laughs> no, I have it on right now, for real. Right. Uh, look at that, Martian, there we go. Right. Oh, it, oh Angie, yeah. hold it up. I'll keep it up while Tori's talking. Yeah. Uh, it's just the, uh, this is the G2G model, I think. It's basically, the thing that, same thing like Tori said, I attract, it attracted me because it looks like a watch. Right. And so I think with this one, the Android, Android Wear, I'm excited because it looks like a watch. It looks like something that people who are non-tech would wear and would wear and use and not feel like, you know, they're the jet suit or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or especially because, I mean, like, for as much as I loved that Samsung commercial showing all of the sci-fi watches throughout history, like, it kind of also showcases everything that's wrong with geek wear. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's really off-putting to people who aren't familiar with it. It's way more complicated than it needs to be. And it maybe doesn't do what we want it to do well, you know, but it's got a bunch of other bells and whistles and it can unlock your car and it's got a flashlight, so that's really fun and nerdy. Um, so, uh, especially uh, moving down to, to Anabon, because we had talked a lot about, like, at-a-glance computing. Uh, what do you think about Google's approach to serving us information on our wrist? Um, I mean, I think the approach is what we expected. You know, we talked about how having uh, Google Now and a smartwatch will work. And, you know, seeing that they made that announcement that, you know, this is basically the platform for wearables, for Android wearables. So, you know, they, I, I'm glad that they actually have taken up the mantle and said, look, we provided an OS for you. You can now do whatever you want to with it and throw it out there. So that's something that's nice. Um, I know you're showing off the uh, the Moto the Moto 360, which was part of also uh, Google's announcement. They did clarify that. One thing I I, I do like though with the Moto 360, I'm a, I'm a watch guy. I have like 10, 12 watches, you know, and I have this guy here, the um, uh, Qualcomm Talk, and yeah, it's nice and everything, but I prefer wearing my my second watch here. It, this just looks like a wristwatch. Right. So the fact that I have this, you know, and and then I have this this triangular or no triangle, sorry, I said triangle. Wow. Um, this uh, <laughs> circular. <laughs> no, no, no. This, 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 this. I believe that's a dodecahedron. I think yeah, that's the shape you're looking for. Is a decagon. No, no, just just call it a, a square. <laughs> this square. Oh, that I have oh here. square. That's the word we're trying. <laughs> yeah. Now. Yeah. This, 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 this just isn't as comfortable as me wearing this as any of my watches. Right. And the fact that that looks, you know, I think I think a lot of things with smartwatches that appeal, like Tori said, the first thing, appeal is the first thing that most people look at when you're buying something like a watch, where the watches have gone from being important important to, to now just, you know, accessory pieces, uh, people want to see something that they go, yes, I can buy that, especially, you know, if you're buying a watch, people like me who buy watches, buy it because of the different styles and designs and things like that, so that part works first, and then making something that's functional and, you know, less intrusive, I think, goes a long way. 
Well, and I think it's so funny that you went back to showing off traditional timepieces because when I'm not wearing my Qualcomm talk, I've actually started wearing a happy hour. So <laughs> it's, it's a watch that shows you when happy hour is. So that's its big feature. And then it also so what are you has trying a, to tell us, Juan? What a bottle opener say? built into the wrist. I'm trying to say I, that I've got I one hour. Be, or, <laughs> a raving uh, Mexican Cokeaholic. <laughs> Whoa, what kind of coke to pop from my wrist oh, uh, bottles? Oh, open. I was gonna say, sir, I don't know if what you want to say. <laughs> well, and I should be careful saying I'm a Mexican cokeaholic because that could also mean something. But yeah, yes, uh -huh, totally different uh -huh. type of coke. I yep. suppose. not the right kind of coke. <laughs> So, especially in some of the conversations we've had in the past regarding, like, uh, at-a-glance computing, um, and Andrew, what do you think about their implementation of trying to put more of a card-style UI um, on our wrists? Because I I've always had big concerns with how much information we're supposed to try and interact with, especially, like, on the talk in the Galaxy Gear. Um, and, and I kind of feel it doesn't necessarily fix the problems of ergonomics, you know, from, like, staring at a big screen phone to then staring at a tiny little display on my wrist. Yeah, that was the thing that immediately got me on board because what they were saying is they changed the UI to look like for something that you would just take a quick glance at and then look away. So it the way that they've formatted the weather, it's not just like a regular square like we've seen on other devices. It's not just saying the time in the, in the little section they give you. They formatted the text and the content to fit that content where you look down at your hand, you look at it, and then you look away, and that's it. There's no false interaction and all that other stuff. And that's what I really liked about the 360 in particular. Uh, I'll give the LG G Watch the benefit of the doubt. I'll wait till it comes out. But my first impression when I looked at the 360 was saying, wow, that looks like a watch, and it has Google Now. The reason I love my Pebble is that it gives me the notifications. But if I'm able to get Google Now, which I turn to my phone to constantly, that's going to be something I look at a lot. Yeah, and, and, and I, I'd have to agree with that. Oh, no, go ahead, Tori. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just going to say, I was just going to agree with that. I, I think that even I, I've had conversations with people all of the time. I'm sure you guys could understand having people come up to you and ask you tech or non-tech related questions all the time. But Google Now has become so important for Android users that this is huge. I, I don't use it. <laughs> you don't use it? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. That's he's, it was just the way he's, not like, he's not an Android uh, user. That's why. No, no. I, yeah. I, I have one Android phone and one Windows phone, and my my standard Android phone is, is the Note Three. I just know I'm not one of those people. I want Google to have my up to date information. Well, and, and I, I think we're cresting a discussion in terms of sort of uh, data and ergonomics, and yeah. and I think Google is trying something, and it's experimental with. Uh, sort of anticipatory search, you know, trying to feed me relevant information before I need it. And there is a very, very creepy Big Brother element to that. It means <laughs> I have to scan through a lot of my stuff. But it's also, we're, we're sort of a gener generation of, if it works and it provides me convenience, well, then I might give it a pass. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, like, I, I might not be quite as concerned with my security issues. No, no, that's <laughs> true. But I, mean, but I think going back to, to, you know, the idea of smart watches and design, um, you know, you can have a watch that has a, a square face or rectangular face or whatever design face, but there are certain things you have to do design-wise to fit a smartwatch. Um, I'm just very – I'm also interested to see what kind of display that um, – watch has, the Moto yeah. 360, you know, it's a circular LED display at least, you know, so I'm wondering how they actually got that to work. Is it fully circular or is it something that actually is a smaller print in there? Because right. all we've seen is is basically, um, you know, we, we see ren we see renders of it, so I'd love to see how they actually were able to create that display. And, and, and I'll be really curious too after pl having played with, you know, there's the digital ink or e-paper display on the Pebble and the Mirasol display yeah. on the talk. You know, if I can't see my watch in direct sunlight, then it's not really much of a benefit for me. Yes. So um, one of the other things I, I, I wanted to get your guys' opinion on, and we don't have to spend a whole bunch of time on this, is I'm still not necessarily sold on the idea of voice actions. Um, you know, like that idea of having to talk publicly into my wrist to respond to a text message or to search for information. And, and I was just kind of curious, especially because, you know, you guys have been using Google Now services a lot on your phone. And actually, Tori, let me, let me go down the list the same way again. I'll start with you again. Um, what, what, what have your experiences with Google Now voice search been? And do you think that 
having a mic built into your wrist that responds to OK Google, is, is that going to improve the experience? Is that going to detract from it? No, it's going to cause me headaches, especially for those people <laughs> like you, uh, you East Coasters that love your uh, public transportation. Can you imagine the conversations that are going to happen while people are talking to their risk? No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sold on it. And even with using my, um, my Galaxy Gear, that was a headache for me to respond to text messages because people would be being, like, I would be one of those annoying people. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, and I, I would I would say, what do you think, E? But you don't really use it anyway, so yeah. I'm going to say that you're probably not necessarily on board public voice search in general. Oh, me? Yeah. Um, no, no. I mean, I I am, but I but I, it's it's one of those things you're you're limited to two choices. One, I mean, actually three choices. One, you pull out your phone and reply. <laughs> two, there's a tiny keyboard on here and you type. Or three, That's not happen. Exactly. I'm just saying. I'm just giving options. I'm giving options. Or three, use voice activation for it. Or or four, you could use you know pre pre selected texts. Oh right. Auto replies. Uh, text, uh, auto replies and things like that. The problem is that there is no way around it at all. There's almost unless there's some way where you can have a pair of gloves that you can type on. I, I'm just. Well, I'm gonna become court stenographers. That's yeah, but but yeah, exactly. But <laughs> but there's but there's really no way to go around it at all. I mean, the reason why I said that is uh, it reminded me of uh, a pattern I saw for Samsung's Galaxy Glass, which um, I think uh, it was Pocket now that saw that uh, that posted it up, and they had a diagram in the pattern where you see someone's hands and the keyboard is actually laid on the fingers and the hands. So basically, you, if you want to reply using Google uh, Galaxy Glass, you look at your hands, the keyboard shows up, and then you basically move your fingers to... So, so we can assume someone at Samsung has recently watched the Keanu Reeves masterpiece Johnny Mnemonic at some point recently. <laughs> uh, yes, they <laughs> have. <laughs> trying to incorporate that into designs. Um, but, but, so, but really, there's, there's, I don't, there's no workaround. I mean, you have very few options to go with. Well, and, and I guess, I guess Andrew, like, is, is, this a, is this a situation where we might be looking at a little bloat, especially as developers start adding to the smartwatch ecosystem? Is this something that... Um, maybe we need to look at better incorporation of Bluetooth and audio design if the wrist can't solve our problem? I don't think it is. I think the wrist does solve our problem. Uh, what we have here isn't a technological problem. It's an etiquette problem. If you're in public, yeah. you probably sh probably shouldn't be using this thing. Remember when we had the, the push to talk about phones, which was the most annoying thing in the world, where you'd be minding your business, you're eating lunch, and then you've got someone like two tables over constantly speaking into their Sprint microphone, getting on everyone's <laughs> nerves. I think we're probably going to have the same situation repeat itself, but it's going to be a little bit better. We're just going to have people talking to the wrist like, search for directions to uh, Chipotle or something. <laughs> That's not a sponsorship, by the way, but I will take a Chipotle. I'll, no, I'll join you. In, and uh, this podcast <laughs> is brought to you by Chipotle, Mexican fine dining cuisine. Um, you can find uh, more information at Chipotle.com. We do have a, a comment from the Q&A from Sincere B, and uh, he asks, have you all watched the movie Her? Uh, yeah. Wearable technology would be nice with that kind of earpiece, with the kind of earpiece he had in that movie. And maybe part of the etiquette, what you're talking about, Andrew, is solved by removing the speakerphone element of the yeah. equation, so there's it's it's more of a one-way conversation. You might be able to hear what someone's searching for. You might be able to hear what uh, what they're trying to reply to a text. But it's a little more personal. It's a little more intimate because the microphone's right up here, as opposed to out on your wrist where you have to sort of broadcast what you're talking about. And that's the thing, like with the with what we saw in the, I don't know if you guys saw the demonstration video where the guy's on the bus holding the cake, and then he gets that text and it's read out. To, he looks at the screen and then he replies. That was less intrusive, but if you're searching for something and you say, what's the score of the game, and then Google talks back to you, that's going to be something very annoying, especially if I'm, like, recording the game and I don't want to know what's happening. I'm trying to mind my own business, just got to make it home to my DVR, and then you say, oh, my God, the Lakers won on the last second shot. I'm, I'm just going to look at you and just be so upset. Okay, okay. Andrew, Andrew, what of advice? Never record live sporting events. It's already happened. But, I mean, there's no, but that's an example. There are people that... That, like I remember, like there's people that uh, record the Stanley Cup, and because they have to be at work or they purposely avoid Twitter, which is my number one rule. Don't go on social media if you're yeah. if there's something that you don't want to know. 
And this type of interaction is just going to spoil it. So again, it's an etiquette issue rather than a technological. It's almost like we need to build in a control. So like, if someone starts asking for a sports a sports score on their watch, I can interrupt them with, "Okay, Google, no spoilers." <laughs> <laughs> I yell it across the across the side of the bus and just but shut them down before all, they have a chance to ruin it. We've, we've all been on the trip before, where the people are listening to their music out on speakerphone or bringing like their jam box on the train and just blasting yeah. their music. So, <laughs> we know that this is like totally going to happen. With yeah, 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 it will, it will. I mean, but it, it's nice to see to see um, you know Google push that platform, and you know we'll see. Well, I, I want to see the differentiation between from company. you know we know that. You know, Motorola is probably going to be one of the first, uh, as well as LG, and we know how already Samsung is completely different because they do their own thing with you know the the Galaxy Nine. But I would love to see how it differs and what kind of added services they can add to that to that basic framework that Google's providing. That makes me say, okay, fine. You know what? I'll take the LG Watch over the Moto 360, or I'll take you know the HTC. I'll take the LG Watch over the Moto 360. One of the two. I'm just saying, you know. So that's the kind right, of thing right, right. that, you know, I, I would love to see from from these companies as 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 it rolls out. Well, and 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 I, I like I'm gonna go in reverse order, so I'm gonna start with Andrew on this next question here. But we've already heard uh, interest expressed from uh, traditional watch manufacturers. Like Fossil is already putting out a little noise. Like this might be the mass market push they've been looking for to start investigating their own line of wearable technologies. I, like some of the fear in the marketplace of having to develop your own software. Is yeah. now removed from the equation, and Android is selling well enough that if this works with any Android handset, um, do, do you see do you see like Rolex jumping into this space now, or is it still <laughs> well, we still need to you're going to have to offer, offer like something immaculate. I'm sorry for cutting you off, but ro- no, no, for Rolex no. to get involved, they're going to be like, this watch also helps you glide across the room, like. <laughs> Yeah, if it's Rolex, Rolex users probably use like a Virtu phone or something. <laughs> that, that <tend> to, <laughs> but like, I could definitely see Fossil or somebody like a like a I'm trying to think of it like Timex or somebody else who it makes sense for them to be in this space, but it doesn't make sense for them to make that initial investment to do all the R and D to build something from the ground up. You know, Nike can pull that off with their fuel band or whatever. They can build their own system on top of other tools, but what Google essentially did is say, hey, we've done the hard part for you. You just need to make the hardware and hire a couple of guys who can make sure that your software and firmware are up to date. So for that situation, it's going to work well for them. I I think they're going to get Fossil on board for sure because they're going to be first to market, but somebody else is going to see this work for them, and they're going to make one of these traditional watches that I'm holding up work more like one of these connected watches. Well, and especially like um, be- because you're you're sort of a watch guy, and I've actually asked you questions about traditional timepieces. E, um, yeah. what what would be like a company that you would maybe get excited about seeing enter a space of wearable tech, like someone who brings uh, art or design to this that might actually help improve the experience too? I- I'm trying to find the company. I did a review of their watch, and I can't even remember it now anymore. I did it last year. It's a company that had that that grid watch uh, that had twenty the twenty six letters in the alphabet. Um, once it comes to me, I'll, 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 um, I'll do, do you want I'll me to skip in. you and we can come back? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'll continue, but when it, when it, once I remember it, I'll, I'll try. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, but, um, you know, like you mentioned someone like Rolex, I don't want to see a Rolex watch like that. I, I'm a watch guy, and that's not why you buy watches. You buy it for the for the chronographs, the timepiece, uh, the the immaculate quality build. That's why you buy those watches because you know the, when you ask a watch person like, okay, uh, what watches do you have? They go, is this Swiss? Is this Swiss timepiece? If it's not Swiss timepiece, forget it. You know, <laughs> I, I I may go with a Japanese quartz, but so those are the kind of things that those kind of users are looking for. Right. Uh, but but if you're looking for something that you know. Um, you know, people like like you mentioned, Fossil, Timex, or even maybe a slightly higher brand like maybe an Invicta who does you know slightly cheaper watches and also has um, you know stuff in the five hundred dollar price range. Those are the kind of companies that see this and say you know this is possible. I think a company like a Rolex or or Bolivar may want to introduce some of this technology in the background, but not cover up what's their brand and their, their, their brand and what yeah. the watches look like, you know, maybe some of that weather information may pop up and things like that, but nothing, nothing that really takes away from, you know, the watch itself. 
Well, and uh, and Tori, and just especially knowing how how you've sort of been incorporating style and fashion into your discussion of technology, is is this is this the beginnings of of tech where we'll finally be offering real solutions to a female audience, or are we still in the phase of if it's tech, we have to paint it pink so that we right. can get on board? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though, a lot of the fashion brands are catching on to wearable tech. So, like for New York Fashion Week, they actually did like a, a wearable tech um, a show or whatnot, and then they, long story short, yeah, they're definitely going to it. Like, I was thinking of brands that I wear every day, like Marc Jacobs and Michael Kors. Like, I need them to oh, yeah, yeah. hop on the bandwagon. And, you, I mean, even, uh, I'm a football girl, so if you look at how um, they made those fashionable helmets for this past Super Bowl, that they are getting into more things because, like, people want to be cute, you know. Now while they are, um, <laughs> while they're wearing this technology, so I think that'll definitely be something that that I see happening, and I've seen that already because I get emails, and I, I mean, I just, I'm everybody wants to look like a, a nice looking geek now. I, I just remembered the smartwatch. So, oh yeah, what what is it? Uh, I'm trying to find the screen. Here it is. It, can you see my screen? Yeah, I just I just saw yeah, it on you. Yeah, it's called the QLock Two. So it's basically just the the right. alphabets and basically you know uh, randomizes. Oh, your, I did see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your um your um what do you call it again? Your time and date and all that stuff off there. So a company, it's a German company, and that watch is like nine hundred bucks, I think. <laughs> wow. That. Yeah, yeah, it is. We see because Jesus, people... Jesus don't want me to have that one. <laughs> <laughs> See but, but see, but that's the thing that people don't understand about watches is like the market in the in the watch range is so different from smartphones. It doesn't have to be a 150 price. It doesn't have to be a 300 price. It has to be solid for someone oh, yeah. to go. Yes, I'll buy that. That's it. And it has to be from a reputable manufacturer. So you know, um, again, most watch people would look at this and say, much watch buyers would go, okay, it's cool. The Motorola looks nice. Maybe the one from LG might look comparable. But I want to see one of my favorite brands of the companies that I, I, I like to follow make something and I can go, or even like that German company is a specialty company, and I go, I'll pay $900 for it. It's solid. <laughs> you know, I mean, and that's, that's, that's why I say that market is, you know, there's the mass consumer market at the cheaper levels with the fossils and Timex, and then there's the, there's the high end where it's just, you know, you, people will spend whatever amount of money for a, wrist, a wristwatch. Yeah, and you can get both from the same company because the very first watch my parents ever gave me is this one, uh, this Movado watch. I got this when I was a little kid. And in middle school, I got this Esquire, and Movado owns both. And one was probably like $300 at the time, and the other one was only like 120 And if you go for a really nice Movado nowadays, uh, $900 is considered a bargain. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> So there's definitely the, the, a market out there for someone to introduce a premium smartwatch, but it has to be up the, up the standards of these regular traditional timepieces. And I can kind of see Motorola thinking that in terms of aesthetics, they want to go for that, but at the same time, they're definitely going to keep the cost low. They're going to try to do the premium experience at a semi-mass market price. So you're well, thinking what a 250, 200? Yeah, I'm thinking price? this is going to be along the 250 to 300 price range. Okay. But hasn't that always been traditionally the problem with tech, especially tech commentary, where if it's got the same processor as another product, it needs to be the same price? Yeah, and I think that's going to be a problem. Like uh, when I forgot one of the smartwatches leaked recently. I think it might have been Motorola or LG. The the specs of it, everyone was saying, oh, this is the same as the Galaxy Gear. So uh, it should only cost like 150 or something. I don't think that's going to be the case with these two devices. Uh, maybe the LG one because LG wants mass market for everything. But if Motorola thinks that they can charge a little more and they can give a better experience, particularly with battery life and display technology, it's not going to be cheap to get that LCD screen in a perfect circle. I can yeah. tell you that right now. So we're we're going to have to see something have to give one way or another. Yeah, uh, we have some questions here in the. Uh, oh yeah, I got my Q and A back up. Good, good, good. All right. Um, since B has actually a, a couple funny comments, uh, referring back to our comments about a, a Rolex smartwatch, he's like, uh, Rolex, you can call your car to the front door, but it's only gonna work with the Maybach. 
<laughs> so uh, you're, you're probably right since here, but it, unless you've got a Bugatti or unless you've got a Maybach, then that's only the only kind of car that you can self-drive with your Rolex smartwatch. Uh, he also says, I think Swatch Watch would be the Nokia of smartwatches, and I'm not sure what you mean by that. What are you, what are you trying to say there? Because I, I like Nokia design. Are you trying to say like Nokia and Swatch are like comparable? What's up with that, man? No, I think I think it, I think is design and also just the general appeal. Because you remember, there was a time when Swatch was huge, and you know everyone was kind of you know always wanted that because they have different colors, different styles, and things like that. So oh, okay, well yeah, for for like your colorful, you know, you you yeah, need yeah. something in like a Nokia Nokia Cyan on your yeah wrist, be, yeah because also I mean Swatch, Swatch. <laughs> and 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 Swatch also has a very wide range too it's one of those right. where they have the fun selection and they have like the chronographs and all that stuff in there and they are and they're more higher priced and they're not still that expensive too so um, I think that's probably what he was referring to and then uh, we have from Lou Rod do you guys follow Smartwatch fan and I am not uh, on Instagram of... yes I do actually <laughs> I have not followed Smartwatch fan so I'm gonna have to jump on that as soon as we're out of this hangout um, the the one thing that I did want to talk about before uh, before we jumped off because uh, we, we've been focusing mostly on the Android Wear announcement there's gonna be an SDK coming out soon so that other developers can start developing services for these smaller screened experiences but I was really surprised at seeing how aggressive Motorola was in getting their announcement out sort of like at the same time if not a little yeah. ahead of the main communications push for Android Wear and what this might mean for a company that's looking at getting bought out by Lenovo is this going to be the next phase of Motorola is this where we're going to see a lot of momentum from them or accessories um, actually let me start with Tori again just uh, if, if, uh, if you're looking at a company like Motorola is, is that a brand name that people are going to want associated with you know putting stuff on their wrist? Not necessarily right now, but they're being bought out by Lenovo, and Lenovo is doing wonders in the computing world right now, so you have to think that they would kind of implore some of that technical savvy into the smartwatch that they're going to be bringing out, because that's just, I haven't seen anything Motorola has put out that I've been like, eh, I don't want it, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I think I think for me, um, it, it's a good play for Motorola. You know, it shows that they're not dead in the water. They're not, you know, playing. Let's wait till, you know, we get bought out. You know, I mean, they're kind of taking the same sure. thing as Nokia too. Right. I mean, you know, no, I mean, what are we like? Like the Nokia X announcement, but Nokia said, look, we're going to keep making stuff till the very end, till we're yeah. bought out. And and that's a good approach because. You know, we saw the Google announcement, and next minute, everybody was like, whoa, 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 what's that round thing? Motor, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want that. And you, you can see from the amount of people who are who are lining up to watch the live feed tomorrow, I mean, it's, it's huge numbers. You know, so they've basically done a good job in saying, look, we went with a, the right approach of selecting a design. And remember, it's the design. We haven't seen the software run of this thing other than a few glimpses. The design has really brought everyone to say, oh, that's a watch. Yeah. That I can wear, and they've used that to say, "Hey, let's let's bring this forward." And I think this will help them, and also for Lenovo, it's great. Love it. Like, hey, if these guys keep working the same way they do now, when we buy them, this is just fantastic. Or maybe also Mo uh, Motorola wants to keep some of its uh, anonymity on a, um, within Lenovo, so that at least right. it's not totally absorbed by it. It can be that separate division, or become the full cell phone division of, you know. Lenovo when it, when it, when they become part of the company. So I think it's a it's still a win win all around because I, it, there's a lot of good buzz right from from this today. So. Yeah. Well, and especially as Lenovo is a company that's been sort of building traction and develop, developing design for Windows 8 that we haven't seen from other companies like you know the Yoga earned them a lot of buzz. So so Andrew, do you do you think that that's that's kind of how how Motorola is going to subsist from now? Now that especially we know that a lot of the R and D and high tech stuff of Motorola has been pulled and is going to stay with Google, is is that what uh, the future of this company looks like? Yeah, I definitely think this is going to be something that they invest in heavily because you got to remember, Motorola was making smartwatches before Google came along as well. They had that uh, Moto Rocker device, which is more of a fitness type yeah. of watch that worked with your phone. And this one, the way that they're pitching, like it's still very early, but my first impression is they went out to make a watch first that works with your phone. They weren't trying to 
do something that depends on your phone as much. Because of the renders we saw that they had the classic watch faces with like the two different time zones and all that, that was something that really appealed to me. So I think when Lenovo buys them, Lenovo is going to recognize that we've got some talent here and we're going to maybe not go full speed ahead, but we're going to invest them. We're not going to just cut them off and just uh, focus strictly on smartphones. You know, this is going to be something that's going to add value to what they do. So I think Lenovo will definitely embrace this. Well, and I just I just think there's there's this interesting potential in knowing that Lenovo is trying to brand their own smartphone experience of a Lenovo branded phone with Motorola built accessories yeah. or, or however what pieces that they want to try and put together to try and cement that relationship. I've got one last question, and uh, and I think we can make this sort of a simple. Uh, uh, maybe one or two sentence reply from everyone. Uh, this comes from Soji in our Q&A. We'll start with Tori. Do you think Google will make their own smartwatch not from an OEM? So control their old hardware like a Nexus smartwatch. I mean, they might try it. The Nexus is a pretty dope phone. I think it would be stupid, though. I think they would make, they could, their forces would be better placed with them outsourcing to, say, other companies where, like, Fossil could get involved with it. I think Google has a tendency to, you know, put their hands in a, in a ton of baskets, which is smart, but then you end up with subpar devices sometimes. Um, and, like, I hate to say this, but the Nexus, though it is a solid phone, is not really, like, a lot of people aren't checking for it, so. And, Thundery, what do you think? The uh, Nexus smartwatch? No, no. It's, remember, the... <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my tone there was a little bit too much. <laughs> uh, the announcement says the Moto 360s summer as well as the LG smartphone summer, which coincides with summer starting on the 22nd of June, and Google I.O. is on the 24th through the 26th. So they will all show up there. Hey, what do you it. think, Andrew? What do you think? No, I do not think Google will make their own one. I think they will partner with somebody, perhaps uh, most likely LG, because LG was really saying, we were very happy to work with Google. This is the fifth product we work with Google, and they mentioned their Nexus devices. So I think, if anything, if Google needs like a reference design or something, they'll just give out uh, LG G watches to yeah. the people at I.O. That's what I'm expecting to happen. I don't think we'll see a Google... Nexus watch or anything like that. They'll just say this is the Nexus watch because the platform works for everybody. I, I, I think I think we'll see that and also the Motorola watch because they still will own Motorola then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was I was gonna say like I but especially in how Google doesn't Google yeah went Google. Down. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say Google doesn't like to do favoritism with Motorola, which is why we saw them go to LG twice to do the Nexus and Samsung to do the tablet, Tablets, when they yeah. easily could have went to Motorola for either device. And they, I think they went out of their way not to use Motorola for the Nexus, just to not put up the the, the inference of impropriety. Oh, no, no. I, I'm saying, well, but what I mean is I think at I.O. you're going to have an experience where they are going to actually not have a reference design, but have three smartwatches show up and say, oh, okay, these okay, yeah. are the bases. So, a.k.a. Oh, yeah, yeah. the LG, the Motorola... And then, like maybe a fossil, since fossils in uh, you know main uh, mainstream uh, watch company that says they're interested in this. So I think you will probably see that, and those are the kind of devices they'll give out, so people can say, well, you know, any almost any company in tech or or wristwatch could make you know a watch here in this platform. And of course, that's going to come hand in hand with the consumer release of Google Glass finally, right? Right? Am I yes. right? Yeah, yeah. I'm top. Right. High five. Yeah. Uh, no, down below. I don't think wish, it's wish. Wish. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, everyone, I because because uh, we we've, we've talked about this for a half hour, and uh, it's just, it's just really exciting news to get both of these announcements: an actual hardware announcement from Motorola with a fantastic video showing off the Moto 360, and then also Andrew uh, Google going uh, all in showing off not only sort of a teaser video of what the uh, UI might look like, but also really pushing their developer. Can, can uh, I ask one SDK question to everyone? Too. Oh, yeah. Um, so how do you think this will affect um, both iOS, Apple, and uh, Microsoft with their own smartwatch plans, especially now that technically Google has dropped the gauntlet and said, here's what we're doing, and here are the people that are doing it, sort of. So how do you think um, that would affect those Steve guys? Steve Jobs or... left Apple a couple years ago, so... Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. You have no faith. 
<laughs> Listen, I have an iPhone. I love my iPhone, but it, it's it's not. They are not innovative anymore. They are not intuitive to the consumer market. They are just they are existing, and so we have to be serious about what we're up against. I mean, they created the, the iPhone came from them creating the um, creating the iTouch, right? And so they were like, oh, we should make this into the phone. Tell me where this innovative thinking is at right now with, with Apple. Okay. I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Juan and uh, Andrew? Well, no, I'll, I'll defer first to Andrew. Uh, I think this doesn't affect Apple's plans in regards because whatever Apple was going to do, it was going to be made by Apple and only work with iPhones anyway. So if yeah. they're still going to come out with something like that, I think they will because they have been hiring a bunch of people who have some wearable experience. Yeah, they've got Nike, they've got health people. So I think Apple's definitely still going to pursue this, launch something in 2015. Uh, For like Microsoft, I think they probably, they're probably just too focused on phones and all the other stuff to even get involved in this space right now. See, I I I think I think they will get involved, but I think it'll be around September. Um, for Microsoft anyway, just because um, Nokia has already done a lot of groundwork on that, which it's just a matter of bring them in and fine-tuning that to see something out there. But I, I think they are still off the heavily focused on trying to release Windows Phone uh, 8.1 update, which is uh, next yeah, month. Yeah, that's, so. that's, that's really how I'm kind of feeling, where we know Microsoft will be moving into this. They've already expressed interest in wearable and mobile computing, but they've got serious problems in platform unification that they've got they've got to work out first. And you can't really do a smartwatch until your consumer base is comfortable with some kind of notification system. So unfortunately that's the one area where Windows Phone 8 especially is is really far behind in giving you some sort of centralized uh, ability to track what's happening in your digital world. Um, yeah. once, once that happens then I can see live tiles on my wrist but they're still, because the, the whole platform is still behind Android and iOS, uh, I have to believe that the smartwatch is going to be that, that much far behind uh, what uh, Android is doing now and what Apple will be able to move, hopefully, by the end of this year. Because I kind of need to see Apple competitive in this space. Uh, my job as a writer gets really boring when Apple <laughs> isn't delivering at the top of their game. Yay! Sorry, I meant, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I'm serious. I, like, I used to be a really big Apple fan, and I just kind of feel like they could be stepping up on some of this stuff because they had they they had little glimmers and little clues of really exciting consumer wearable computing with the uh, the iPod Nano Touch, with pe- companies coming out with watch bands for that, and that could have been a proof of concept device for Apple to start just looking at how consumers were inter- interacting with that kind of hardware, which yeah. then could have moved into a proper Apple polished design. But what I've seen recently from this company is a company that doesn't do the first iteration very well. And that could have been their first iteration, so they could have polished and streamlined the experience from there. Yeah. And so if we're going to see a first generation Apple smartwatch, which then we're not really going to want to buy until it's been refined with Apple version 2, um, I, I think that's really disappointing because that's a two-year conversation for Apple when we're going to be seeing rapid iteration in the Android space and hopefully some competition from Nokia plus Microsoft. In, I, I forgot, in I forgot to add uh, Samsung in there. How does this affect Samsung? I mean, we just saw the uh, full line of smartwatches. I mean, the one that we all liked was the Fit just because it was, it was yeah. Yeah. focused. You know, But how does this affect them now that... You know they're running Tizen, and this is running you know basically some version of Android or, or what have you, and you know this just looks pretty good. I'll, I'll go yeah. first, just just to sum up in one sentence. I think this puts a big hurt on all of our favorite third-party manufacturers because they have to work so much harder to build Mindshare, and Google is the 800-pound gorilla. They can just say smartwatch, and a huge chunk of their audience is gonna is gonna listen. Hey, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and. And it was bad enough for, like, Pebble was able to withstand the onslaught of Samsung because Pebble was fundamentally a clearer and better product. But with Google doing most of the heavy work to, if you tell someone, hey, that flight information that you have, your transportation, all that other crap that you're interested in is on your watch automatically, you don't have to relay and then look at your phone, that's going to be something that attracts a lot of people. Yeah. And what do you think, Tori? Do you, do you still do you still pick up a Pebble or a Gear or a, a Martian in a world where 
Google is probably going to be able to better support software. We have to see it in practice, though. Like a year ago, I wouldn't have been seeing myself using a, a smartwatch at all, and now I use it. Well, I haven't used it in a while, but when I had it, <laughs> you're like, "Well, I use it." Well, okay, never mind. <laughs> so you really have to you you really have to think about it. I just wanted to see it in practice and to see how it's actually going to work, because a lot of these things are good. Like when the the gear first the first gear dropped. We were like all gung ho about it, and then there were so many other things that we needed. And now the second one, we're still waiting on it. So, I, and the Pebble, for instance, is great. It's a solid watch, but I mean, we wouldn't been, we would not have been able to compare it to the gear unless that dropped. So for me, it's just a, a hands-on type thing. I need to see it. I need to use it to be able to, to give it that kind of stamp of approval, or you know, give it the whole Apple slide back. We have to to touch it and caress it. And just know it to really experience it. I get okay. you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but actually, that's probably a good, as good a point as any is because now, now that we're all into you know, the excitement of the announcement, we're all going to have to kind of play the wait and see game um, because it doesn't sound like the Moto 360 is going to drop until this summer. Um, yeah. So yeah. now we're playing, going to play that wild speculation and especially giving the, the, the entire ecosystem time to... Uh, for developers to start delivering services and everything else, too. So uh, for my panel, my gaggle of gadget bloggers, I want to thank you so much for joining. Definitely check out, uh, I'm going to click on here, we've got Tori from Glasses and Glitter and glassesandglitter.com. Definitely give her a follow on the uh, on the Twitters. And uh, she's, a, again, really great commentary in, in incorporating fashion and lifestyle into our, our gadget technological terror. We've got Thunder E from Border Work with his sexy dance moves. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Oh, yeah, get it, baby. Get it. <laughs> okay, uh, board okay. at work. Easy now, easy. Uh, he's bored at work on Twitter. And uh, you can catch him on YouTube with some phenomenal gadget reviews and uh, gamer reviews and TV reviews. Uh, definitely check out his channel, Bored at Work. And Andrew Cam, uh, Mobile Burn. Oh, damn. Double fisting it right there, man. Jeez, so, man. <laughs> phenomenal commentary on, on the entire state of the mobile industry, and uh, you definitely want to make sure you got him bookmarked and you're following him on Twitter, especially if you're... Because you, it's it's soccer, right? It's that kind of football? That you no, no, it's it's real it. football. <laughs> I, I follow either one. I, I, I tailor it based on who I'm talking to. When I'm talking to my Jamaican family or... People in England say football. <laughs> when I'm in America, I say soccer oh, as well. So. Oh come on, no, you you tailor to tailor it to whatever game is on the TV in that moment. <laughs> let's let's be real. <laughs> that's 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 how you roll. That's how you do. And yeah. of course, I'm I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter, somegadgetguy.com. And uh, if you search for some gadget guy on YouTube, you'll probably find me. Uh, thank you everybody for joining in this discussion. I'm really excited about the future of wearable technology, and we'll have a lot more commentary. Uh, leading up to some of these product releases, I'm sure. As always, thanks so much for watching, everybody, for sharing, for subscribing to all of our channels, following us on Twitter, getting into those conversations, because that's really what we get into. We like interacting with you guys and having those chats and debates and really getting into our, you know, our geek, uh, geekery there. So uh, thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you all on the next video. Yeah! Woo! Lights up! <laughs>